Hmm. Eve, you had a, a wonderful sort of command of your space story um, from the other day about the layers you put. And I know in the group of sort of survivors that have coalesced around Duncan and Miranda and people are always looking for protection and how to keep the spirit or even their soul, if they're at that level, the sanctity theirs. And you talk about the Taurus field as being a protective layer. Can you um, tell us a little bit more about that and how to command your space to keep these things out? Okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example of something that took place, which will give you more of an example of how this works. And I went to an Aboriginal community where the kids virtually run the town. And what happened on the first Saturday night, nearly 500 kids ran amok and they stole nearly everything. All the tents got broken in and stole everything. Next year, Monday night, 120 kids are run amok and they're panicking now. They said, oh my God, what's Saturday night going to be like? So the woman was running, it was called Libby. So I said, Libby, I want permission from you, from the council, from the elders, and from the organisers to take over the metaphysics of your festival. The next morning she came and she said, they've all given you permission. I said, oh, thank you. I took a stick. And I drew a circle in the sand and said, that is the Taurus field of your festival. When you created this festival, there was no boundaries. Therefore, anything is allowed in and out. I then put one of my students on the table. I called in the entity of the festival. Now, why does the government say A, B, and of entity, name of entity, over companies? Because anything created is virtually a creation, which is an intelligence, which is an entity. I then sent it back to its creation. I put a boundary in it. And the boundary was anything that enters this boundary of this festival will be taken out instantly. Saturday night came, we had 70 kids turn up and not one bit of trouble. You could see the campfire in the hills where the entities wouldn't bring the kids into the community because they know they get taken out by putting up a boundary, putting a structure into place in your reality. So the whole idea is that knowing that the field around is your field, knowing nothing's allowed to enter, anything enters, it's going to get dealt with real fast. The moment you have to protect yourself, you have to put out, and you have to start putting out something outside of your reality, you haven't got it. You've got fear online. The moment you've got fear online, you're going to attract them straight into you. It's like putting a big blinker above your head and saying, vacancy, vacancy. You're going to zoom straight in. It's understanding that nothing can enter your space without permission. Stop giving them permission. Start acknowledging your spirit. Listen to your spirit. How many people listen to their spirit and they're giving thanks to guides and gods and everything outside their reality and not thanking the person who's given them all the information, their own spirit? How would you feel if you was a poor little old spirit there and you're trying to give the person all the right directions in life and they're thanking everybody else and ignoring you? You kick your feet up and say, okay, you want to run the show, you run it. <laughs> and when when you hits the fan, then you call me. So just by being aware and setting the intention and being aware of your spirit and what the boundaries are and what belongs to you and what's your responsibility, you can protect yourself from by these things coming in? By telling, by telling your spirit, this is my vehicle, spirit don't let anything in this vehicle, I do not invite anything in, do not let anything in space this vehicle. By laying up that, speaking to it, this is your field. Between you and your spirit, make that agreement, thank you, nothing's allowed here. If anything gets in, it's going to get dealt with. You may already have a lot of stuff in there, in other dimensions, in separate dimensions. There are probably many layers of dimensions within you that let things in from the past. But when you stop feeding these things, it's interesting. When you become aware and you want to make changes, and you decide to stop feeding these beings, then they're not going to obtain energy. If they're not going to obtain energy, they're not going to get fed, they're going to have to starve or find somewhere else to go to get fed. So eventually, they're not going to hang around, are they? Right. 